came through the door. Little bus says your mama dancing on the floor. They got fresh painted toes. Five inch heels, man, anything goes. And short mini skirts. If you catch my eye, best believe I'm a flirt. Go ahead, girl, drop it one time. Go ahead, girl, drop it one time. Uh, you messing with my mind. The way you keep doing it, you one of a kind. Two to the head, baby, you gotta take a double shot. You got skills, go on, show me what you got. Hey, listen here, I'm kinda amused the way you work that thing. Back it up and to me. So usually I don't get this groove, but you make me wanna break all types of rules. And like the stars that shine bright, highlight you like Damn, your body smell good and dress extra tight. Lean to the left, from and then right to your right. Lean to the left, from and then right to your right. You a breath of fresh air, I'm finally breathing again. If they walk on the talk, they say you gotta pretend. Enough elaboration, brand new hook on in. Why you working? Brand new hook on in. In the middle of the flow, the DJ got us dancing and the girls getting low. Thick and tall chicks, anything goes. By the end of the track, all we do is chain clothes. So <laughs> and we having the ball. Next thing you know, then we get that call. Last shot, stop for alcohol. Last shot, stop for alcohol. She said she wanted to dance with me while I waited at the bar. And I'm a super cool dude, don't want to take it too far. But soon as you see me, you know I'm a star. You just ain't never hear me rapping while I'm on the guitar. Hands up, die jumping like a cookie body come out the jar. And I'ma get in my car. All right. Take all across the globe. And sure thing she ain't never seen before. But take the side, baby girl. I can tell you guys die with your smile. Like the way you move your heels, look around. You got the demons that is going with your hair swaying in the wind like a fan blowing. I can't know I gotta hit you with the right hook. Lifeline, gotta get you in a nice place at the right time. Till then, baby, we'll have some fun to let loose hit the chorus come up. Uh. Today is Wednesday, July 23rd. July 23rd. Thank you. Who we got over there? Tell, hey, there you go. Um, we got studio audience today. We got studio <laughs> audience today. And as you can see, we have a table full of guests today. We have Paradise to my left, your right. And we have Shalice to my right, your left. Um, let me see. Do we have Andrea? Um Close seat, she's waving, yay. <laughs> we have my personal assistant, Miss Gemini, hey. and the ghost intern is here. There she <laughs> is. <laughs> so today we have all these wonderful guests, and at 425, we're going to have Brad Parks, um, another fr- another author friend who will be joining us via uh, telephone. So today I want to give um, a shout-out to these two young ladies. They are... Uh, you, uh, young adult author, children's oh, books you. authors, oh, wow. um, and they will both be releasing their first novel uh, later next month in August. So you got to make sure you um, pick up their books, and they're going to tell you a little bit about themselves. Um, let me let uh, Paradise tell you three sentences real quick about herself. Okay, well, my name is Paradise. I'm 14 years old. I go to E.O. Haynes High School. Um, I like to play basketball. Okay. Let me see. Um, my favorite color is purple. But you don't have purple on today. <laughs> yes, she does. Don't she? It's is little, it purple? It's a little bit of lavender. Okay, well, see, when, when somebody says, you know, their favorite color is purple, I'm thinking all purple. You know, uh, like just a purple dress, a purple do, shirt. But that's not, nah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to so overkill that, that's the old, purple. Is that old lady like? Is that old lady like? Is it, you can you can be honest. <laughs> no, you can be honest. She's like, I don't want to no. hurt her feelings. I know, right? Like. <laughs> well, see, as you can tell, I'm not your typical, you know, older woman. So, see, I mean, that's okay seasoned. if you say that, you know, because if I say I like, well, I like blue. So I go all out. My car is blue. <laughs> uh-huh. Most of the stuff I wear is blue. Yeah. So, I, but okay, you know, that is a walk around with, with blue, blue purses. Right. You don't I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You just don't see them. Okay. That's all that is. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, she's not old. She's seasoned. We, I'm had, seasoned. This conversation we had that conversation a couple weeks ago. Yes. So, I'm just a yes. seasoned woman. So, to my right, your left is Miss Shalice. Is, am I saying that right? Yes. Okay. And so, tell us three, three quick sentences about yourself. 
My name is Shalise. I like to sing and dance, and I love karate. Oh, wait a minute, karate. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> I might need her for protection. She can be on my security detail. She's good, too. I mean, because I don't, I, don't, I don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but it's the little stalker that we, we, you know, found out that we have next last week. So, yeah, yeah I might need to keep her around in the studio for a little while longer. <laughs> teach, me, teach me some moves. Um, so, um, Paradise, first of all, when I saw your name, I, I I did not get how to say your name until like probably 20 minutes ago. And I kept saying, oh, my gosh, I'm going to mess up her name. And then I was like, oh, it's Paradise. So, <laughs> so, so, for, okay, tell me, how do you say your last name? Aziz. Aziz. Okay, I was all wrong with that. I ain't even going to let you know what I said, <laughs> how I was like, Aziz. That's what I was <laughs> That's what I, <laughs> that's how I said it. No disrespect, but I was just, you know, how you try to sound it right, out. So, right. yeah, so tell me, what made you write? A novel, a, a children's book. It's a children's book, correct? Yes. So what made you want to write that? Um, it's, the book is basically about how I go through a situ- I go through my situation. I have epilepsy. Okay. And I couldn't figure out a way to express my feelings, and I wrote them down, and eventually it came out into a book. So that's What's the how. name of your book? Asia's Joyous Healing. Okay. Oh, okay. So it, it's your last name. No. no, Asia is part of my middle name, which is Enasia. And Paradise is not very a common name, mm-hmm. especially the way right. it's spelled. Exactly. So Asia is more common to me, so mm-hmm. I was like, just okay. pick Asia. All right, so what made you, Shalise, what made you write your, now your book is different. So what is your book about? My book is about um, a boy whose parents don't have enough money for him to go to college. So he robs a bank and he gets caught and he has to make a decision whether um, he has to make a decision um, of what cop he should trust to help him. Wow. Okay. And what's the name of your book? Landis Dover Lifetime. Okay. Okay. She actually, that's the first book in her series. Oh, okay. so it's going to be a series. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. So, so when do you foresee that the, the how many books are going to be in the series? Um, I have Landed Double Lifetime, Mikhail's Close Call, Quincy's Quest for Control, and Reigns of Reality. Oh, okay. So, so is this going to follow the same young man just through? No, it's it's different different teenagers, but it's about choice making. Oh, okay. uh, see, and th- let me just let me congratulate these two young ladies They're because awesome. they are doing something that a lot of people might have said, well, you know, why are you just not outside, you know, getting up on your basketball skills? You in high school now. Think about that. Or, you know, you could be making different choices, but they have chosen to take pen to paper. OK, laptop to fingertips <laughs> um, and and put put down their thoughts and their ideas. So right. when you decided that you wanted to write a book, did you find that your friends didn't, did they support you? Or they were like, no, just come out and play some ball with us. Or just come outside or hang out. You girl, you can go to the studio. You can, you know, you can just be singing right now. You don't have to be writing. Did you find that your friends were supportive? Um, My friends, they, they were supportive, but I don't think they actually got it until I started actually really being serious about it. Okay. Like, they thought that, because I'm more of the type of person that likes to play a lot, mm-hmm. and I was telling them, I'm writing a book. They was like, no, Girl, stop playing. <laughs> Girl, no, you not. So you know you ain't writing a no book. When I showed them the cover of my book, they was like, oh, you really wrote a book? I'm like, yes, I wrote a book. <laughs> so who did the cover of your book? Um, Foresight Publishing. Okay, okay. So we have Miss Andrea to thank for that. So, yes. So when you, how, how did you find these two young ladies? Did they find you, or did you did you hear something about them? You Actually, know. Shalise is my daughter. Oh, uh, Shalise okay. is my was daughter. Okay, that, that was easy. So Where's that, that easy button? Easy. That was easy. <laughs> and uh, Paradise, I've known her mom for a few years now. We okay. went to the same church for okay. a, a okay. few years. All right. And so that's how I know her family. Um, but both of these young ladies are awesome, uh, and I let them know that this is something that not everybody their age gets to do. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so be excited about it and be mm-hmm. happy about it because you're published authors. Right, you know, exactly. And other teens are going to look up to you. Yes. You know, they are. They have some things down the pike, some events where they're going to be speaking and everything. Oh, wow, okay. And um, they're doing an awesome job. Wow. They're doing an awesome job. Yeah, because let me tell you, being an author is like I, I'm – 
I, I feel that authors are a different breed than everybody else because we have to use both sides of our brain. You know, we have to think of, you know, creative ways to write a story. Now, because you said your story deals with um, epilepsy, is it taken mostly from what has happened to you or is it things that you wish you know, didn't happen, or is it things that you wish you could do that you're not able to do? Well, clearly you're able to play basketball, so I didn't think that epileptics would be able to, you know, I, I thought they were, you know, taking their pills and staying at home. That's what I thought. But clearly I'm wrong. Yes. <laughs> so, right, exactly. I, yeah. I, hey, I can be wrong. I'm not, I, 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 I can admit when I'm wrong. So is your book about, you know, what, what you can do even though you have a physical challenge um no my book is about what i've gone through and okay what i'm going through okay so is it a everyday struggle for you is it you know something that you have to think about every day oh i have to do this i have to eat right i have to you know exercise uh, is it a is it something that you can't forget like you know just wake up every day and just be like oh, okay i'm like a normal everyday teenager yeah, I have to think about what I have to do. Like, I have to wake up, take my medicine. Like, I have to be cautious about what I do, make sure I'm not putting myself in danger. Like, I have to, before I go to sleep, I have to take my night medicine. I can't watch TV for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. I can't go outside without Ooh. friends and I just, stuff like are that. Are these lights going to bother you? No. Oh, okay. Because I, I, I just remember that video by Kanye West, and it was like some people, you know, they give okay. that little disclaimer you know at the yeah. beginning that if you are epileptic you can't have you know can't look at the video mm-hmm. so just wanted to make sure <laughs> okay so for you how did you come up with the story of the young man robbing the bank and then needing to make a choice well some of my friends actually go through stuff like that really yes. and what grade are you in I'm going to the eighth. Okay, so you're in middle school right now. So what what middle school? Shout out your middle school right now. <laughs> James Madison. James Madison. Oh, okay. I'm from Marlboro, Maryland. Oh. I went there too. Hey. Oh, whoop, whoop. I live right around the corner from yeah. James Madison. Okay. <laughs> so okay, I know exactly. I drive by it. I've gotten many a tickets by that little. You know, we ain't even gonna talk about that. I digress. <laughs> I'm, we ain't even gonna talk about that. <laughs> um. So when okay, do your teachers do both of your teachers know that you're a published authors right now? No. I no. So are you going to tell them? Are you going? Is this going to be like your big summertime news? You come back from summer break and you be like, "Hey, y'all, guess what?" My principal knows. Your principal knows. So is she supportive? Yes, my mom is actually trying to get my book in the library. Oh, oh wow! Good for you, mom. Yeah. Good for you because you know why? Because you always got a market, and so you too will be the best career day, you know, present presenters because you're young. You're still. I mean. Have you found now, and this is coming from someone that is an adult or tries to act like one on a normal basis, have you found that marketing, because I know that you can't just count on, you know, foresight, uh, publishing, publishing. Mm-hmm. publishing to do it all for you. Have you found that you're doing a lot of marketing yourself? Now, okay, your mom is the owner, so <laughs> I know that's hand in hand. But for you, are you finding that you're having to do a lot of marketing? Yes. Like, what is, what is the hardest part? In, in the entire marketing, what is the hardest part for you? I don't know. It's, it's just a lot. It's I a lot. think both of them are shy. Okay. And so I think the hardest part, part about their marketing is putting themselves out there. Okay. You know, as an author, right. you have to be, you know, like, here's my book. You Here know, I am. And be able to talk about your book. So that's what we're working on with them on. Okay. Um, they're very shy. Mm-hmm. And so to just go up to somebody and say, you know, I wrote this book and tell them about the book, you know, I think that's the most difficult part for them. My hardest part, well, one of my hardest parts is beginning the book. Oh, beginning the book, like sitting down to say, how am I going to start the story? Yeah. So how did you start this story? Did you start it with him robbing a bank or was it just? Well, um, well, I like to write ever since I was young. So I wrote this book before I even knew it was going to get published. So I just started it any kind of way I wanted to. So how to. did you, how did you, okay, your mom is the publisher. How did, how did you go to your mom and say, mom, I want you to publish my book? Well, we were sitting in the car waiting for my brothers and sister to come down from karate. And I was just reading. I mean, I was just writing this book. And so I read it to her, and she was, wanted me to finish the book. And she wanted me to type it on a laptop, and it came out as a good story. So she went over it, and she wanted, I wanted it to be published, and she did too because she thought it was good. So it 
it was published. Okay, wow. Mm-hmm. So her well, first book came out in March. Oh, okay. So her your first book is already out. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So and yes. so how how are as a publisher how are you because it is your also your daughter right? How are you making the distinction distinction between your daughter and your author? Well, when it comes to writing books, I don't really make a distinction. Mm-hmm. It, she's an author. Okay. And so I told her from the beginning, I'm not going to publish this just because you're my daughter. Okay. It has to be a good story. It can't be something you just threw together and mm-hmm. typed a little, you know, a couple of words and said, here, mommy, publish this. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we went through a process in the beginning where I made her think about different parts of her story. You know, I was not going to write anything for her. Okay. So I made her write it. And then we went through it. And I made her think through some things, you know, that to, to make sure it made sense. Okay. Um, and then she would go rewrite some parts. So I made her go through the whole process. So, so you had to edit. You went through yes. the whole editing red pen. Welcome yeah. to yeah. my yeah. world. In, isn't it hard? It's hard because it's like you don't want to change those words. It's you can say it. You can say it. Yes. She's just a publisher. She gets you frustrated understand. with me sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the mommy yeah. part. Right. It's like, mommy. Yeah. yeah, but see, you have to say, Miss Davis. <laughs> <laughs> but so for, I, I, I mean, it draws out of both of them. Mm-hmm. You know, I want them to experience the full process, not okay. because I know somebody that can publish my book is so easy. I right. want to, both of them to experience the process. Okay, so you can be okay. So she's not your mom, right? So you can be honest. <laughs> you can be honest. So when she started editing your book, was it hard for you to look at those words that she might have crossed out and said, "No, you need to think about this"? Was it hard, or did you just want to leave it the way that it was? I mean, no, it wasn't hard because the book looked better from when I did it. Because when I did it, I had a lot of misspelled words. Like the grammar, it was just all types of wrong. And the like the punctuation and things just wasn't there. So when she fixed that, I was like, oh, okay, it's better now. Okay, I mean, all right. Really have a so is are both of your books, okay, are they novels or are they more, do they have a lot of pictures? Or is it like a picture type of, like what age group would your book um, go for? Um, from like five to ten. I mean, if you can read at five. I okay. And w- and what about? Well, your book is about making choices, so I'm guessing middle school for for your book. Well, my well, my brother can re- read like big books, so I would say eleven through high school. Okay, so yours is more of middle grade and high school, and yours is more for primary grades, like elementary to probably beginning middle school. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Paradise's book has pictures in it. Okay. um, To make it, you know, more, um, you know, viewable for those young children. Okay. Shalisa's book is just a chapter book, no pictures. Oh, okay. um, And it deals with subject matter that is not for necessarily small children okay the subject matters theft obviously mm-hmm. um sexual abuse oh wow um, okay bullying mm-hmm. um and, and those types of Drugs. you know um, okay. subject matter. so are you both are you are you both singly doing your marketing or are you leaving it up to your publisher leaving it up to the publisher <laughs> <laughs> well see because paradises is not out yet okay you know she hasn't been able to do her damage, but she's going to do her damage in, okay. in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, Shalise, I make her, okay. you know, do it. I make okay. her, you know, we have the bookmarks and everything. And I make her go out mm-hmm. and, you know, sit. when we do events, I take mm-hmm. her with me and she does the event. Okay. Paradise is going to be doing events and they're going to be sitting at the table and selling their book. Okay. And when people come, they're going to be the ones to tell them about their book right. and make the sale. Okay. So, so have you signed your first book yet? Yes. You did? How was it? Did you practice your handwriting? Did you like, <laughs> did you practice your signature before that day? Did you was like, okay, no, not this. Okay, yeah, like, no, not like that. Did yes. you practice it? Because I, I still do. It, I practiced it at my dad's house, and I use a lot of paper. A lot of paper. <laughs> <laughs> so sure do you, you write anything in the book? Like, you know, to, like, say, you say, to be swinging. What would you write in my book? Well, in the book I write, I write my name in the person's name. And I write, thank you for buying my book, and I hope you enjoy it. But if it's a family member, I write something different. You are making the family members buy the book, right? Don't give them no books for free. No. <laughs> I'm just saying, you can give one or two away. Now, look at here, family members. I'm looking right at you right now. <laughs> look at here, family members. She's an author. You need to pay. Yeah, they're buying them. Yeah, right. See? See? Publishers know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to. Be, you got to support wherever you can. And so I congratulate you two young ladies. And, and let me just tell you, when I started this show and I sent out the, the, the first set of emails, Andrea was like right on it. She was like, <laughs> boom, I got two for you. And I'm like, okay, all right. I'm, <laughs> hey, I'm with it. Just let me 
know when. She sent me everything. So like a month and a half ago, before the show even came on, I had their pictures. I had their book covers. Eric, can you put their um book covers up for me just so that we can let everybody know that they can go and get... Okay, so the books are going to be available online. On Amazon. Yes, on Amazon. Yes. Okay, so are they going to be Kindle books? Yes. Okay. Yes. So there's Asia's Joyous, Joyous Healing. Healing. Beautiful cover. Beautiful Thank cover. You. That's Thank a beautiful you. cover. Yep. And this one is Shalice's... I can't Landon's really... Deal of a Lifetime. See, I'm trying to be cute, so I ain't got my glasses on, so I can't see the monitor over there, but... I want to give a <laughs> shout out to Leah Friday, who is our graphic artist. Shout out Leah, Leah Friday. Great. So she did both books? Yes. Legends oh, wow. Book Design. Okay. okay. Are, is she local? She's actually in Canada. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. Well, we have She's viewers in Canada. Because you know, Facebook. we're in 135 countries. That's right. Here on right. listenvisionlive.com. We, that's <laughs> where we are. That's where we are. So I want to thank you two young ladies for coming in. They came in. Let me tell y'all. We will come. What, me and Miss Jim and I, we were just sitting here talking, and then I just saw one young lady pop in the doorway, and she looked like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, Lord, this poor child probably looking at me like, oh, my God, what have I got? What has my publisher got? See, you can say that now. What has my publisher got me into? See, you can't really, you can say what has my mom slash publisher got me into, but be clear, she's your publisher second. That's she's right. your mom first, Mommy but first. you know when you go to events, she's Miss Davis. <laughs> she's Dice. Ms. Your Twitter is Dice Writes. Is that what you like? At Dicey Writes. Oh, at Dicey. Well, okay. okay. At Dicey Writes, go follow her so you can keep up on her adventures, so you can um, see where her book drops, and please support her. Do you have does does do you have a um, Twitter account? Yes, it's at Shalise Writes. At Shalice Wright, so yes. make sure you go follow her. I'm expecting everybody to go follow them. Yes. And both of them I have a Facebook page. page. Oh, both of them have Facebook pages. Yes. So Facebook.com slash Dicey Wright. Dicey Wright. Facebook.com slash Shalice Wright. Okay. See, so so you can find these two wonderful young ladies. And let me give a shout out to mom and 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 sisters for supporting. Shout out to Tiffany Aziz, Paradise's mom. Paradise's mom and sisters. Hi. They just as cute as buttons, I tell you. <laughs> just as cute as a button. Um, thank you for supporting. And because, you know, some parents don't support that. Some parents would be like, girl, you better put that pin down. You got two two younger sisters. You better go in there and babysit. I mean, you know, because mm -hmm. some people just don't understand that when you have a creative gift, right. you have to use That's that fun. gift. And we be so, believe in cultivating their gifts. Exactly. Definitely. So thank you, two young ladies, for coming in. And I am definitely, when your book drops, well, okay. You both are going to be coming back. So especially when your next okay. next book in your series comes out, we gonna we gonna have it here first, people. Woo! We gonna we gonna be right here with Miss <laughs> Andrea Davis and Foresight uh, Public pu publishing. publishing. Sorry, I keep messing that up. Um, and Miss, let me tell you, her name is spelled so it, it is it is it is wonderful it's to beautiful. see. You know, when you figure out that that is her name and she truly is paradise on earth, I'm just saying, Aww. you know, with all of the gifts and you are the product of your mom, to be very proud, you look just like her. She she's a spitting <laughs> image. I know you. Know, I know people say that to you all the time, don't they? Like you look like your mama. And she has a twin, so there's two of them. What? Like oh, wow. that, see, I'm a twin too, so I, I, I know. I know what the feeling is. I know what the she's feeling is. She's three minutes younger than her sister and Malia. And so am I. Oh my Ooh. God, we need to talk. We need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you both for coming. And um, ne coming up next, we have uh, Mr. Brad Parks. He's a, a Seamus Award winner. He writes uh, mi uh, mysteries, suspense, thrillers. He's coming up in the uh, next couple of minutes. So we're going to take you out with looking at um, Paradises and Shalice book covers. Make sure you support these two wonderful young ladies. BMW of Alexandria believes in giving back to its community. During the month of July, whenever a new or pre-owned BMW is purchased, a portion of those proceeds will go to WETA. Community service is what BMW of Alexandria is all about. Hello, see, you got us ready to get ready to take a picture. Now, I think Brad Parks is on the line now. Brad, can you hear me? Put it on speaker. 
No. Oh, I muted him. Oh, you muted him? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me, Brad? Hey, I'm here. Hey! Okay, you know what? I need you to hold on for one quick second because I'm taking some pictures with some beautiful young ladies that's in the studio with me real quick. See, that's the beauty of live uh, TV slash radio. Cause we're just doing we're doing a quick photo op right right now. So <laughs> say cheese, ladies. Okay, did it. we get it? Okay. Got it. Wait a minute, one more, one more, one more. Oh, you muted. Okay. Be swinging. Be swinging. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. So thank you for joining us, Brad, Mr. Brad Parks, winner of. What? Let's see. A Seamus, a Lefty. Um, what else have you won, Mr. Brad Parks? Just, you guys, keep going. It feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What else? Um, well, I know, I know that you are the only author that. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm going. I don't want to say it wrong. So you are the only author that did what? I, well, so I'm the only author to have won all three. Yes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm also the only author to be able to uh, juggle uh, while catching grapes in my mouth and singing uh, "God Bless America." <laughs> so, that's, that's, so that's right, right up there. So yes, yes. So that you know, and that is a skill set of all of its own. Yeah. However, you didn't show me that skill set. We were in Thriller Fest. We were in Thriller Fest together. And I know Brad only wants to see, he comes to Thriller Fest specifically to see my shoes. I know that's why he comes. <laughs> now, <laughs> normally, normally he's doing, uh, oh, and let me just tell you, he left our table. You know I'm going to tell the story, right, Brad? <laughs> uh, are, are we going to go right there already? I thought maybe you were going to wait on that one. Like, you were going to hold it till the end. No, you know, no, like no. That. Or it's just that you, you want to tell him what a cat I am right off the bat. Yes, I, I am. I am. But you but know you what? Know, you, can, you can tell it. You want me to tell it? You can tell it. I no, no. I'd rather prefer that you tell it, Mr. Brad Parks. <laughs> no, I, I, could just, I could just throw myself right on the stake. Okay, so <laughs> so let me set the scene for, for, the, for the viewers at home and the listeners at home. Uh, this is the awards banquet at Thriller Fest. Um, we have... Uh, uh, five, six, seven hundred people uh, dressed out in their finest uh, at the Grand Hyatt Hotel in in Midtown Manhattan, and uh, they they are the, the cocktail hour has ended. They're they're bringing us into the the main area, and uh, I just kind of uh, I'm wandering around and I see this table with my good friends Austin and Sandra, and I'm like I'll sit with Austin and Sandra until. And now, this, now, up until now, I sound like a good enough guy, right? You do, you do. You sound like a good guy right now because, you know, you're wandering like around. A, a so here's, here's where it turns. So, like, this is like, the, if we're talking about, you know, writing thrillers and everything like that, is it, doesn't it always start that the good guy turns out to be the villain? Yes. Well, so so here we are, and I'm just, I'm playing right type test. So uh, I'm about to sit and enjoy a meal with my two good friends. I'm looking forward to talking about the... Preachers, Primes, and Crooks uh, conference uh, in Baltimore later this year, um, and just catching up and having a good time. And then I get a text from my agent, and he says, there's somebody you have to sit next to, and I've saved a seat for you. Now, again, if I was a good guy, what would I do? I, you would have like, said, well, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm with my friends, and, and, and I can't leave them, but I'm, I'm not a good guy. No, I'm not a good guy at all. I, really, I dropped <laughs> you guys like a hot rock. Like, you know, he moved away from that table so fast, I think I got whiplash. I think was, I, like, literally, was, like, I almost fell was, out of my chair. Was, you know, there was like, actually, so I haven't even told you the worst part of it. So not oh. only did I, did I drop you for a business schmoozing opportunity that I was told I, I could not pass up on. And in fact, I, so I, I do not want to name drop the person that my agent had to be sitting next to because it would be inappropriate. But it was definitely a big name. That's all I can say. Really? And wow. uh, so I wouldn't, I, come on, I wouldn't just drop you for anyone. But so that, if that's not bad enough, um, if you'll recall, they had served us this very nice, shrimp appetizer yes and let right? me just and say I, I, I noticed i did notice that when you left the shrimp was gone the shrimp was gone right <laughs> and then i went to the new place and i ate the shrimp there too i yeah. knew it i knew it because because delia came and sat down and she was like oh is someone sitting here and i said no see i was you know i was being nice i was like no this seat is not taken right 
not yeah. even looking at the plate at first. And I was like, oh, they just put the salad down so you can go ahead and eat. And she was like, oh, this is cute, but why do you have shrimp? And I was like, he ate the yeah. shrimp? Yes. <laughs> not only did he get up from the table, he actually ate the shrimp off the plate I also. I so, ate the shrimp and left. And left. Just got up from the <laughs> table. Like, got up from the table. Like, like, he left I'm so fast, he left a history. trail. I'm His trail was, was behind him. His coat flap was like yes. waving in the wind. His bye, clothes were bye, gone. Bye, be swinging. Bye, yes. Austin. No, oh, no, we didn't get a bye. We didn't get a bye. We were just tail. like, we, we gone. His he came was back. Saying, yes. He came back five minutes later and he was like, well, you know, I just want to tell you that oh. I really had to sit next to my agent. I really didn't want to move. And I'm like, sure you didn't. Well, he came back. Yeah, he came back after he probably ate all the other shrimp off the other <laughs> plate. <I'm> sure. <laughs> I can't say you there, Brad. I, I thought about when I got to my new table, should I take my plate of shrimp to the old table? But then that would uh, that would be even worse. I can't, somehow. I can't I just, save I just you felt there, like, right. you know, at a certain point you need to just make the getaway. Yeah. And then, you know, and he like made you the getaway. To, he made the getaway. Pay, you pay for your crime later. So yes. my, and I will be I will be paying in the form of, of buying you drinks at our upcoming conference in and October. And trust me, and, you and will be, be I'm be gonna make sure I, I I'm of, I'm gonna buckle you down to the seat, Brad. <laughs> yeah. so, and not only so not only do i do am I, I i knew i was gonna have to pay for it on this radio show yes. but you know who's gonna be interviewing me at the conference is austin yes so, yes. so you know austin i'm so i'm gonna have to like be excoriated and flaked in front of a live audience exactly well. exactly so basically everybody in the in the reading universe now is going to know what a complete scoundrel I am. <laughs> yes, but you know what? You make up for it with the stories that you tell. Now, your newest book is The Player, correct? Correct. And so, and, and let me just tell you, I read the first book, which was Faces of the Gone, correct? Right. That was the first book. And when I tell you that I literally read the entire book in one day, you did not. I did so. I read it in one day because when I started reading it, it was like, wow, I, I, I kept saying this. Okay, I'm only going to read the next chapter and that's it. I'm right. only going to read the next chapter and then I swear I'm putting the book down. Okay, one more chapter and I'm going to put the book down. <laughs> and by the time I put the book down, I was on the last page. Mm -hmm. And I have literally read that book three times. Wow. I, I, I have not read The Player and I have not read The Good Cop, but that for me, Faces of the Gone had me from the first page. Brad Parks tells an amazing story. I mean, I was in that alley. I was looking at the bodies. I, I mean, that is who I, I mean, I felt like, I felt like I was Carter Ross. <laughs> there it is. I did. There I felt is. like you, I was. Okay, I can, I can guarantee you, be swinging. you wear much better shoes than Carter does. Oh, yes, I'm sure That's of that. Just, I, I am totally sure of that because he's not, I mean, he's fashionable somewhat, not as no, fashionable he's, he's as really he's really not. He not, really isn't? He's not at all. You know, and, and in fact, the, the character of Tommy Hernandez, his, uh, his gay Cuban sidekick, uh, one of the reasons, of course, that Tommy exists is just to point out how unfashionable Carter actually is. Well, and I know, I know he's not getting that from you because you're a pretty fashionable guy. So, how were Not you? Not really. Now, <laughs> so, oh, so are you telling me that you have someone that dresses you for these events? Because I'm telling you, you're pretty put together. To you know, to be a guy. No, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really good at sort of. I mean, it's not that hard for a male author when you get down to it. You wear a dark blazer and like a blue shirt, and boom, you're done. <laughs> I mean, that's it. I mean, how, you know? And I do. So, and the, actually, the one thing I do, I, I, I believe, and this is maybe somewhat shallow, but I, I actually believe you can judge a lot about a man from his shoes. I yes. do believe that. And I'm not just saying that because I, I'm on the phone with you right now, Sandra. Right. Like, I, I really, and so there is a, a shoe shine place right around the corner from the Hyatt, like yes. right on 42nd Street. In yes, yes. And before I go into Thriller Fest, every single year I make sure I have my shoes shined. Okay, do you, okay, let me ask you. Okay, do you take all of your shoes? Like, do you keep going back and changing your shoes so they can do all of your shoes while you're there? Um, well, so I'm a guy, Sandra. I, I only have one pair of shoes, right? I mean, I, you know, 
and, and it's actually, you, 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 when you're traveling, you have to pack light. And, yeah. and I wear size 13 shoes. So, like, if I pack two shoes, like, that's my whole suitcase. <laughs> that's it. It's done. But see, that's why so, you have this separate carry-on. See, let me tell you how to pack there, Brad. You yeah, have no, I, I, don't, I, I, I do not I do not check luggage. I got my one bag, I go. That's well, it. See, but I, you know, a pair of black shoes, but that's the other thing. It's a nice thing about being a guy. Yeah. You can just get away with that dark blazer, the black shoes, make sure you have the black belt. You're good. <laughs> well, okay, so, well, okay, we're going to wow. have to talk when we get to Creatures, Crime, and Creativity, because well, I'm going to need you to have, you know, because I saw you with the, I think it was like a cream color suit on, linen color suit, and I didn't think you had on black shoes, but we can talk about shoes later, because, you know, that's like a whole show in itself. No, I understand. Well, I do have brown shoes as well, maybe I'll shoes uh, when I see you in Baltimore, just yes. so you can really see how far I step out. Yes. Black shoes. And brown shoes. And there you go, <laughs> two pairs. I know that's going to be a stretch I'm right for the, you. I'm the cutting edge of fashion right there. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about the player. Since this is the newest Carter Ross, uh, uh, are you a mystery slash thriller writer? Is that how I would categorize you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think, you know, mysteries and thrillers are, are somewhat conjoined when you get right down to it. I mean, to me, look, I just try to write page turners. Right. I, I want to get you start turning those pages, and and apparently in your case, I I I was successful because I want you to keep turning them all the way to the end. I want to make sure you never get bored. I want to make sure it never slows down. Um, so if we want to call that a mystery, oh, and there's always a crime involved. So right. I mean, I, I guess you, really you can call it crime fiction to, okay. to to give it the broad umbrella. But within crime fiction, is it a mystery? Is it a thriller? I don't really care. Let somebody else debate the the semantics. I, like I said, I just I want to entertain you basically so okay. the um yeah the player is um well so I, I used to describe this in all sorts of kind of fancier academic terms mm -hmm. and and i found that the fancy academic terms sort of make everybody fall asleep so basically what i've started saying about the player is it's a book about toxic waste and the mob oh wow okay right. so yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah, okay. So, see, now you have me hooked. So I'm ahead. So you're gonna have to. I, I need, and you know what? And I forgot to pick up the book while I was at Thriller Fest. So, well, see, now I'm kind of waiting. I'm kind of waiting because I like when you write in the books to me, like you know, special, my own special little, you know. So I'm gonna yeah, need to get a book from you. Absolutely. Yes. So does that mean we're we're sort of even for the shrimp thing? No, 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 no. no, no. I, I still no, no. have to. I, I got a lot to make up for this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. at least I you might have to bring path. shrimp with you when you come to Baltimore. That's how serious that is. You might have to bring shrimp with you. I'm just saying, or a gift certificate of some sort for shrimp. I'm just saying, make it about three of the extra large, like a shrimp cocktail or something like that, yeah, yeah, just to make up. Definitely. You know. All right. So did, did, did there have to be tartar sauce involved in this? <laughs> No, I'm gonna leave that up to you. See, I am okay. easy. I'm I'm easy. So you know, it, 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 I'm I, well, I, I'm cheap and easy at sometimes, but I'm that's a whole nother show. That's a different so show. That's, uh, that's not what I've heard about you at all. <laughs> so I mean, we, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to get into that another time. Right. So tell me, okay, so before the player was good cop, right? Right. Correct. Okay. So, so you have three novels right now. Uh, five, actually. Oh, okay, which which yeah, two the, are I'm, the am I missing? Fifth. What? Okay, so so the Faces of the Gone is the first one. Right. What's the second uh, and one? Then, and then we move on to Eyes of the Innocent, which is a book about kind of the the subprime mortgage scandal and all the house flipping that okay. went on kind of back in the, the heated days of the, of the real estate speculation frenzy. Okay. And kind of, and really about the people who got left holding the bag once oh. the market kind of collapsed. All right. Uh, the third book uh, is called The Girl Next Door. Right. And, uh, and it's, uh, it involves, and I, I don't know if this premise is, is too much for you, Sandra, but like the idea that there might be violence associated with organized labor in New Jersey. Get out of here. Mm. 
I know. I know. It, it's just a big, it's a tough premise for people to swallow, but it, it really is, uh, you know, maybe could possibly happen. Yeah, possibly, maybe, far-fetched could happen. Yeah, I know, I know, but this is fiction we're talking about, yeah, so okay. I, I feel like I'm I'm on safe ground. Okay. Uh, and then we get up to the, to the good cop, which is about gun smuggling, okay. and then the player, which is toxic waste in the mob. Okay. There so, you go. You got my whole bibliography. There you go, and... and let me just say that when you are out on tour, I'm, I'm always checking your, I'm, I'm Facebook, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm website stalking you because he, yes, because he has these interns, much like our ghost intern. You know, I have a ghost intern, mm-hmm. uh, Brad. Um, mm. So his interns are hysterical. Wow. They are hysterical. Now, I haven't seen anything posted from them for a while. So what did you do with them? Did you did you put them in one of your books? You know, they get so lazy during the summer, Sandra. They just want to, like, take time off and lounge by the pool and go to the beach. I mean, frankly, I'm just I'm glad to have them out of the office, get them out of my hair for a while. Yeah. But, um, but they have um, they are actually cooking up something right now, uh, and, and, it, and it may involve the occult. Okay. Um, well, because, so... My, my latest book, uh, or I'm sorry, not my latest book, uh, my, my 2013 book, The okay. Good Cop, okay. uh, was just nominated for a Seamus Award. Congratulations! Uh, you know, which, is, which is terrific. Uh, the Seamus Award, for those who don't know, is given by the Private Eye Writers of America. Um, to, and now, so I previously won the Seamus Award, but I won it in the best first category, okay. which is you know, that's sort of like the Rookie of the Year Award. Right. Um, which, which is great and amazing because you get to go around and brag to everybody, yeah, I'm a Seamus Award yeah, winner, aren't I wonderful? Tour. He has all his best different pictures. This time, this time, I'm in the big boy category. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm in best hardcover novel. So, yeah, like, I'm, I'm wow. nominated. Yeah, like, I'm nominated up against Sue Grafton and Bill Pronzini and wow. Richard Helm and Tim, uh, Tim, Tim, why am I forgetting your last name, Tim? You know, Tim, good old Tim. Yeah, Anyhow, good old Tim. Um, yeah, this is, and so this is like, this is like the heavy hitters. This is the, the, the real deal. And my, my, my interns were doing a little research and they realized that no former Best First this Award winner uh-huh. had ever gone on to win Best Hardcover mm. Novel. Ah. Wow. So, so there's like, there's a jinx. Right? There, there's, there, they worry that there's a curse involved here. And so they are right now uh, cooking up ways to break the curse. Okay. So I, I don't even know what's going Like, I've seen chicken bones coming in and out of the office. <laughs> I've seen crucifixes. There was a Ouija board not long ago. Oh. I, I don't know what they got going on. So probably they, they're they just are, having chicken for lunch. <laughs> yeah. This is, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it might be that they might just be trying to, but, but I think that, I think there's more. I mean, I think they are, they are summoning some demon spirits or something like that. Yeah, to, to, to make sure to you win the shaman. So when when will you know that? It, you know, when will the announcement, the official, you know, you might have won the shaman? When will that happen? So that will happen in November at BoucherCon. Okay, see. Uh, okay. The, the, the Private Eye Rise of America has a big banquet. And, um, and actually, you know what they do? I hate this when they do this. They wait until the very end of the banquet to announce who won the award. You know why? Like the, you know why, right? W- w- so I can't eat any shrimp at this. And then I won't leave. be able to enjoy anything. There like, you go. All, they all heard about the incident, and, and they was like, this is a Brad Parks rule. Because he will sit <laughs> at any random table and eat the appetizer. So we need to make sure that if he ever gets nominated, that he sticks around for the whole thing. See? So it's actually it's called the Brad Parks uh, clause. Uh, uh, clause. Is the, yes. the BP clause. Yes. That's what it's called. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So my, my own cheating and connivance has caught up with me already. Yes, yes. already. But this is, this is awesome. This is, this is very appropriate for, for the genre that we're in, Sandra, because, of course, you know, the bad guy always needs to get his comeuppance in the end. Exactly. So, so this, is, this, is my, this is my punishment. Exactly. All right, I get it. Now, Brad, let me ask you a question. I have two young ladies in it, the, uh, two young, just starting out authors in the studio with mm-hmm. me. What is okay. the best advice? Because they're teenagers and they just, you know, one wrote a children's book and one is like a middle grade book. What is the best advice that a Seamus Award winning author can give them? Well, so I'll give, I'll give two pieces of advice, actually, because um, they're both pretty short. Um, the first is, and this, this may sound counterintuitive, 
but especially when you're young, do a lot of bad writing. I'm serious. Do really bad writing because I don't think that you can do good writing until you've done a bunch of bad writing first. And there's no time like your, like your young years to, to get that bad writing out of the way. So, like, find an excuse to write, you know, and whether that's your writing for your, your own little journal or a literary magazine or the school newspaper or whatever it is, find, find a place to get your bad writing out of the way because it's going to have to happen. Um, the other is that uh, I always say that writing is a muscle, and that you have to think about it as a muscle. Actually, so so what I do if I'm Sandra, if I'm talking to a group of young people, uh -huh. I um, I mind you, bear in mind, I used to be a sports writer, right? Okay, right. Uh, this, this is what I did before I wrote novels. So I was a sports writer. So I I stand in front of the the group of young people and I say to them, okay, who here has seen LeBron James naked? <laughs> right. <laughs> And, and, of course, I raise my hand. Uh, at this point, I'm usually the only person raising his hand. Uh, well, because I used to cover the NBA. I used right. to be a basketball writer. And so you're in the locker room, and there's LeBron James naked, and you're, you're trying not to look. And, and Sandra, you know I'm, I'm a happily married man. Yes. But I'm happily married to a woman, I should say. I, yes. I have two lovely children. I'm very heterosexual. So I, I say this without any, uh, without any shame at all. Like, LeBron James naked is he is a gorgeous hunk of man. Like, there's just no wow. doubt about it. And I, I like, he, yeah, you're you can secure quote me enough on that. to say like, that. And I, I, I'm cool with saying that. Like, he, he is he is really just quite a physical specimen, right? And I, and then I asked the kids, but do you think, do you think he got that way by sitting on the couch every day? No. By, Ooh, by eating okay. Cheetos. No. He gets that way because every day he goes out and he busts his butt. Uh, there was a, he, he actually had this funny uh, Instagram photo of him like carrying this enormous tractor trailer truck tire around the block with him. Like this, you know, 400 pound tire and there he is carrying around the block. He works those muscles every single day and right. he works them hard, right? Right. Writing is, writing is the same thing. Writing is a muscle, and you need to work it hard, and you need to work it every day, and it's no different from LeBron James' rippling app. If you want to be the LeBron James of writers, you need to work yourself just as hard every day. Hmm. That's and that, great and that's advice. advice. Yes. That is really great advice. Now, you know what? I'm going to give you no, extra no, points for that. that. Because now you have the image of LeBron James naked in your head. I know, I do, you I do. That. Although, yeah, you know, no, if, I, if I it was a you. cowboy player, then I'd be better with it. But, you know, he, I mean, you know, because he just wishy-washy. Did you hear what he did? Because, you know, no, when what? he went back to Cleveland, he caused a traffic jam where he was. So he went to the local bakery and bought cupcakes and sent it to the people that was caught up in the traffic jam. <laughs> See, here's my issue with that. Don't send cupcakes, send a gas card. <laughs> How about that? Because they were, they were, you know, idling their cars while right. he's, you know, in the bakery. So he sent a cupcake and a card, like, a, a, you know, I'm so sorry you were caught in a traffic jam. I'm thinking, send a cupcake and send a gas card. <laughs> See, that would have made right. bigger points for me. I would have been like, okay, no, no, I'm going to eat true. the cupcake, but I need you to put something in this card. <laughs> I'm going to need you to do that, like $25 or something, because, you know, gas is pretty, you know, outrageous right now. Right, um, right. And, you know, and my shoes are not made for walking anywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to have to drive everywhere I go. But um, it. thank you so much. Next time, Brad, you're going to have to come in, into the studio to be with us. Um, because what you don't know is, you you know, we normally toast whoever's on the show. So I know that what well, the two young ladies, they got soda. I don't know what you're drinking right now, but I have my wine glass. So I'm toasting everyone in the studio today, the two young ladies for their new novels. I'm toasting you, Brad, because you are such a funny, hysterical guy. I can't wait to see you again in October because I got some killer shoes that I know you really going to want to see. Um, and of course, I'm going to be waiting for my shrimp cocktail. Just so you know, I'm just going to keep reminding yeah, you of that. Of that. Now it's officially, it's on the record. I owe you. I yes, owe you. you. I admit it. There yeah, it is. Oh, my gosh. See, and and see now, people, at what time is it? Uh, it is 4.50 and 20 seconds. <laughs> he said, Brad Parks, Seamus, and Lefty Award winner said he owes B. Swain Webster. So just so you know, I'm going to be looking for, like, three large shrimp. That's what I'm be looking for. See, you don't even have to give me the whole pound. It's just, like, three large shrimp. Seasoned just right. like they were in New York. So I don't know how you're going to pull that off. 
Well, you know, I, I, I trust that, that Baltimore shrimp are at least as tasty as New York shrimp. I, I would That's hope so. I would, you know, since we are the seafood See, capital, right? I don't right? know. We're the blue no, crab exactly. capital. Okay. Exactly. Maryland, yeah, Maryland is famous for So where do you get crab. good shrimp from if we're the crab capital? Louisiana. Well, no, and, and I actually, I, I live in Virginia. We uh, and, and we live on the Rappahannock River, kind of where it feeds oh, into the okay. Chesapeake Bay. So you should so have some good shrimp down there. We, we actually have, well, I have a few little crab pots that, uh, that, I, that uh, I fish. So I I just bring you fresh crab if you prefer that to shrimp. Hey, wow. I, can, up to you. I can, hey, I, can, I will have my Such little crab word. bed on. <laughs> I won't get right, my nails right. done. So I, just bring I me some crabs and some old bay seasoning and vinegar, <laughs> and I'm so, you will be forgiven. All will be forgiven. Where's there it is. Gosh, uh, you know, know, okay, so right you, are, you are easy. You are easy. There it is. <laughs> I am. See how easy I am? And you don't even have to pay for them. You can just go out there and get them out of the crab pots. Crab pot. yep. get the just chicken, cook them. What, just the chicken neck them. and go out there and fish and, and, and do whatever and, yep. you do? As long as I ain't got to see them alive, I don't really care. <laughs> right. As long as they're already <laughs> red and seasoned when and you bring on them the to table. me. And, and on hot. the table. Yeah, see, I'll even bring, I will bring brown paper. To the conference, and I will be set up. When you see me, I'm going to be at a table with brown paper in front. That's and all you, you know need that to know. that's your table because it'll have brown paper there. With shrimp, a, a plate of salad with the shrimp missing, so you'll know that to be your seat. Yep. Did we lose Brad? I think, I think so. we lost Brad. I think we no, lost no, no, I'm here. I'm, oh, here. I'm, just, um, okay. I'm, I'm trying to. Um, uh, so, uh, so. Uh, I just didn't know you were so fancy with the brown paper. Like, in, in, generally, in my family, we just lay thing. out newspaper. You got to put paper down that, it to eat your okay, paper. you need the brown paper. I, I need the brown paper, I yes. Yes, I need the brown I, I, Come on, Brad. You see the shoes I wear. So do you honestly believe I do anything simple? No. No, I, I, I now <laughs> have been corrected. By the way, since I'm, you know, since I'm on the phone here now, I know some, some of your, your listeners know, but, like, can, can you at least describe to me what kind of shoes you got rocking today? Oh, today I have on the red... Red stiletto heels with like the little ankle strap and two little buckles on the side, and it zips in the back. Hey. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, so basically, does it does it bother you at all that probably half your audience are male shoe fetishists or like foot fetishists? Not at all. Because you know it, why? It, because it, that makes it, me be better. That makes me look for shoes that are out of the ordinary. Because, I mean, you okay. saw the white shoes I was rocking at Thriller Fest. They had hearts on them. I have not seen anybody yeah. with white shoes with the hearts. That's that how she true. got her that flowers last week. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the foot fetish mm -hmm. community does not, uh, that doesn't bother you at all. No, not at all. Not at all. That, that's okay. how I got those flowers that was, oh, you didn't see the flowers, but I had this huge bouquet sitting on the table waiting for me. So when I got oh, here, wow. so so apparently somebody is liking the shoes, and I don't really care yeah. because I had a huge book. And just so that that person knows, those flowers are still living. They are yes. still living. That the rest of the cattle lilies finally opened up. Oh wow! Yes. Oh my gosh, just beautiful. My whole room smells so wonderful. I go and I'm like, oh, all is better now. Stiletto so, stalkers. Yeah, stiletto stalkers out there, people. To be clear, so all, I, all I can warn you is that once upon a time in my career as a reporter, of course, I, I got around and, and, and saw a lot of different things that most people don't see and whatever. So at one point, I saw the the uncensored mail uh, of a prisoner uh -huh. who a, apparently was a foot fetishist. Really? Um, and, 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 and all I can say is uh, if you are approached by certain magazines, uh -huh. Just, just say no, Sandra. Just say <laughs> no is the only advice I can give you. Okay. I, I've unfortunately, I have seen the results of that, and and I cannot unsee it. Oh. Let me put it that way. <laughs> okay. Well, that and, is my and, piece of advice from from Seamus no, the no, Award no, winner. Writing advice and and also good life advice. There yes. you go. So he not only is a great author, he's also <laughs> a life advisor. See? Yes, a life coach. There a life is. coach. There you there are. Talents are unlimited. T his talents are unlimited, people. Well, thank and you this, so yeah, much. This goes to all the listeners. Kids at home, don't do porn. Yeah, there. exactly. Okay, I just, I, I that just is said it. so horrible. Like that is not what you want to do. You, no, they could be no. using their writing muscles to write down yeah. what their, you know, what their thoughts are. It, it could, you know, because there's so many novels coming out every day, so you never know. It could be a bestseller, you know. I'm just saying. I ain't yeah, wrote it yet, well, but... So, and, well, this, this reminds me of something a friend, some good advice a friend once told me in this in this area, and that I, was, I was joking with him about how, you know, being an author 
you know, means on a, on a given day, like, I don't need to dress up, like, I don't need to shave, I don't need to shower. And I was joking with him, like, I, I probably don't even wear pants. <laughs> and, um, and you just and sit said, around writing. You know, and he said, you know, yeah, and he said, you know, Brad, a job where you don't have to wear pants is a good job. Yes. A job where you don't get to wear pants is a bad job. Okay. So just make sure you keep the former and not the latter, <laughs> which I, I, I thought was good advice. And I, I really have tried to stick with that pretty carefully. There you go. So, well, thank you so much for joining us, Brad. You have been a laugh a minute. I tell you, you are always fun to be around, you know, except for when you're ditching me for, the, you know, somebody else who shall remain uh, nameless at the other table. But, okay. So you are, it's, who is it? I need to know. It's been fun, babe. It's been fun. And we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. Yes. Thank you so much. And make sure everybody goes out, picks up his latest novel called The Player. It's the new Carter Ross mystery by Mr. Brad Parks. We want to thank him for coming. I want to thank my two young ladies for being in the studio. I want to thank Miss Andrea Davis for Foresight Publishing. See, I got it right thank this you time. For us. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just tell you that. Next week, we'll have an, another guest in the studio with us. Uh, Miss Jim and I will be here. You never know if the ghost intern will be back, but, you know, we always appreciate when she comes because, you know, it, she always keeps yes, us sir. on track. And let me just tell you, you need to make sure you follow these ladies on Twitter. Look for them because I'll have all their links on my um, Twitter feed when uh, we sign off. And until next week, people, I salute you because you salute me. Good night. Bye. Brand new sounds from Soul Mop Music Group. <laughs> we about to mix this thing up with hip hop and southern soul like it's never been done before. You dig? All eyes on Bobby. Let's go. I just came through the door. Little bus says your mama dancing on the floor. They got fresh painted toes. Five inch heels, man, anything goes. And short mini skirts, if you catch my eye, best believe I'm a flirt. I'm a Go ahead, girl, drop it one time. What you say? Go ahead, girl, drop it one time. Uh, you messing with my mind. The way you keep doing it, you one of a kind. Two to the head, baby, you gotta take a double shot. You got skills, go on, show me what you got. Hey, listen here, I'm kinda amused the way you work that thing. Back it up and sue me. See, so usually I don't get this groove, but you make me wanna break all types of rules. And like the stars that shine bright, highlight tonight. Damn, your body smell good, and dress extra tight.